He revives and he refreshes us. Everybody say that. He revives. Say it again. He revives and he refreshes us. Say one more time. He revives and he refreshes us. Now personalize it. Say, he will revive and refresh me. All right. The other one is offended by what I said. Shake them and say, we're preaching now. Say one more time, he will revive and refresh me. That's what God is promising us. And we're receiving that with both hands. All right? Let's look at this. Now, I know that revival, we all attach certain connotations to it. It's fine. Every one of those is right. But let's look at some verses in the scripture that will convey the message I'm trying to communicate to you in a clear way. Now, I looked at the English dictionary, which everybody has access to. I looked at the words revive and refresh. I was, ex I was pleasantly surprised and excited by the contemporary meaning of these words. Revive means to restore to life or consciousness. What does revive mean? To restore to life or consciousness. Say one more time to restore to life or consciousness. In other words, the thing that is revived once lived. You don't revive what is alive. You revive what once lived. The thing that is revived, you are bringing it back to its consciousness. The second definition is a lot of them in the dictionary that I chose it means to regain life, consciousness, or strength. Let's say it one more time. is to regain life, consciousness, or strength. When we say God is reviving us, in our contemporary understanding, we mean God is restoring us to life and back to our consciousness. God is restoring us, causing us to regain life, consciousness, and strength. Now... That's why I love this course of my language. <clears throat> um, we speak English in this course, and it's very exciting. Um, have you ever heard the expression that, that says so-and-so is conscious of themselves? Okay, we've never heard that. Have you ever heard that? Hmm? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. hey, when you say, in our language, for those who are not closer speaking, when we say someone is conscious, we mean that all of a sudden they are aware of certain things. They, from time to time, you, you see them going like, because they've just seen someone who needed to go. So as they are talking now, they are so, like, I don't want to be like that, so they're going... conscious. It can be the good conscious or the bad conscious. The bad one is where pride sets in. Who conscious. If we're not mentioning them, they are offended. Who conscious. <laughs> Have you ever noticed young girls that they get conscious around boys? Hmm. Or boys when they get conscious around young girls, I love it when I'm in the men's bathroom and you see these young kids and you know this one is at that stage. This young guy standing in front of the mirror is worse with the Indians. They wet their hands and they go and they, and they like, and, they, and you see the closer guys, they go pulling out some spinach somewhere which he never cared about. All of a sudden they are what? They are conscious. I don't know what happens in the lady's bathroom, but I know in the man's bathroom, you watch him in front of a mirror. He's going like, and he's, mm, you, are, you all here, he ignores you because, who conscious. How many of you ever went through that stage? Don't put up your hand. Some of you are still there in your late 40s. 
Don't look at your wife. Look at me, please. Who conscious. In other words, you don't want to be seen in a bad light. Amen? So, what does revival do? Revival spiritually makes us conscious. We're going to look at conscious about what? So, in other words, your conscious doesn't just live haphazardly. <laughs> Those who are at my age, 46, you know, we are at an age where I can just walk to pick and pay in my slippers. I don't care. If I were to ask you right there where you are seated, look at the guy over 50, look down on their feet and see if is he wearing the same shoes. It happens. If they are all brown, <coughs> the other one has gone shoelaces, the other one is asleep on what took and walk yo, yo, yo. Because they've gone past the age of what? <laughs> Consciousness. That's why they dressed up like they had just fallen off Noah's Ark. They, they are so antique, it's because <laughs> they've passed that stage. It's a consciousness. That's why they are buying their clothes from pick and pay. It's because... Who do you think buys clothes from pick and pay and sparks? It's these over... Don't look at your husband. Look at me now. They don't care. The ones who are conscious, it must have a specific label. Even if they can't afford it, they will rather buy one pair of jeans for the whole year as long as it's got a... A label. How stupid they are. They are conscious. One pair of shoes. You could have bought five from Sparks, but you... So the life of a believer is a life where we are constantly conscious or aware of who we are and whose we are. Does that make sense? The life of a when revival hits you, you become so conscious and aware of who you are and whose you are. Did you get that? You're not just available. To everything and everyone. You are conscious of this truth. Of who you are. And whose you are. That's a believer. That's why we are not always available. In everything. It's because we know in our hearts. This can't work for me. I know who I am. And whose I am. I'm giving you permission now. Ten to one person in the building here. Yeah? And tell them, you belong to somebody. Do that, please. It might help you if you are turning to your wife and you were fighting on the way to church. It might help you to reconcile. Tell them, you belong to somebody. And who's that somebody? It is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Revival, it, it comes to make us conscious. So when others are touching this, eating that, going there, saying that, watching that, you tell yourself, mm -mm, I can't. Because I belong to somebody else. And I know who I am. The person that I am, I'm conscious. I can't be found in those places. <laughs> I can't be seen doing those things. You thought revival is when sinners are coming to Christ. It's part of the deal. But the biggest revival which we're going to see from Scripture is when you and I, the followers of Jesus, in your workplace, everybody is stealing. You say, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I know who I am. And I know whose I am. I can't be seen on TV paraded by the hawks like everybody else because I know 
who I am. If I get involved in those things, I am scandalizing his name. I will say this, you know, some people I know get offended and leave the church. That's fine, you have a choice. I'll never change that message. I'll say it again even now. The reason why I don't have girlfriends as a married man, number one, number two, a Christian, is because I know who I am and whose I am. If it offends you, repent. Or go to a church, Yom Jolo. Not here. Can you believe that people are offended by that and they even leave the church? Go and join us somewhere. I will never change that message. Last Sunday we got a revelation that your brains are chlorinated with what? Let's just take it here now in these extramarital affairs. Here, I have a girlfriend of four or five or whatever. <laughs> and I'm walking with my wife in town. And these stupid things, they are watching us. They say to themselves, ah, if only she knew. Who am I scandalizing here? My wife. I disrespect my wife. So if I live in a sinful manner and the sinners who I sin with see me in church on Sunday, we lay... The, what, are they, what are they saying? saying? Ah. Only if he knew this one. You are a sinner who needs to repent. I can feel that 2024 is going to be something else. Just tell your neighbor, 2024, we are in for a big... Pastor Don, that is good preaching. Amen. <laughs> Come to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 says the following in the New King James. Or do you not know that your body, whose body? What about it? It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is what? Who is in you. Where is the Holy Spirit, child of God? Where is the Holy Spirit, child of God? He is in me. Can you imagine me taking the Holy Spirit to a girlfriend somewhere? Hmm? I'm dragging him to a boyfriend somewhere. I'm dragging him to a tavern somewhere. Don't lie and say I'm going to preach. Preach what? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Did you get that? You live like you belong to yourself. When you came to Christ, he took over. You are no more your own. I belong to Jesus. So like M. Hammer said, you can't touch this devil. I belong to Jesus. Can I read this? Oh, by the way, the context of that portion of scripture talks about sexual sins. <laughs> Doesn't talk about anything else. It talks about sexual sins. That if you're going around, sleeping around, don't think it's... I like what the other version says. It says it's not skin to skin. It's a spiritual truth. You are selling your soul to sin. Hmm. You're going to be okay. It's one of it. You are Billy Boomlo. When's that? Sexual sins. Sexual sins. He says, This body, 
the Holy Spirit dwells in this body, then I can't take this body and go and sin with this body. I don't care how if you are in sin, you need to repent. So let me take it in the message. It stretches it a little bit. Listen to verses 19 and 20 in the message. He says, Oh, didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place? The place of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? What is the physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. In other words, you can't separate your body from your spirit. Would God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through, say it again, and through, say it again, and through, You repent. Let's go back to that verse. God owns the whole works. Now, what is so, let people see God in and through your body. People must see God in my body and through my body. In other words, when they watch me, <laughs> God will help us. This is a very serious message. Very serious. If you have to repent, repent. I'm honest. <laughs> Revival is here. The danger of losing this awareness is that abuse becomes unavoidable. Once we don't know or we are unaware of who we are and whose we are, then we're going to abuse these bodies because we don't know. They say idle hands are the playing field of the devil. It's not in the Bible, it's an English expression. But it is true. Just sit there and you're idle and you do nothing as a believer. Nothing. You don't pray, you don't read the word, you don't serve. The devil will honor you. He will. I'll say it again. The danger of losing this awareness, this consciousness of who we are and whose we are leads to abuse of our bodies. Now you thought of those who are sleeping around as like, yeah, Mfundi is here, he is, yeah, yeah. What about you, gossiper? <laughs> what about you, jealous one? What about you, mpitanis? It's a big Greek word, that mpitanis. Tell your neighbor that one, mpitanis. Say it again. Say, if you don't say that, you won't make it to heaven, mpitanis. You mpitanis. And if you don't understand that, I wonder if you are saved. No, it's a joke. What about you? You sow seeds of confusion amongst believers. People are fighting because of you. Double tongued, a snake. Here you are this and there you are that. What about you? This body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. So let people see God in this body and through this body. Amen. <laughs> you know... We've, we've, we've relegated this Christianity to levels that are very disgraceful. Nowadays, you get scared when you meet someone you haven't seen for about 10 years to ask, how is your wife? 
Because you might be asking about the third one. Yes. How is your husband? You might be asking about number what what? Hmm. I was meditating on this thought um, during our break. And this conclusion came to me, I don't know whether it's from the Lord or it's just me, that there are certain people who have chosen never to change. It's the truth. It doesn't matter what you say. <laughs> they are not willing, and they will never change. That's the truth. There are some individuals who will never change by choice. These are the people who will tell you, Pastor, forget it. I'm fine like this. Now, they don't say it here because here they feel the power of the word when they walk out of here back into their lifestyle by choice. You can't sit under the word of God and it doesn't change you. But you can if you don't want it to change you. By choice. A guy who's abusing his wife sitting here, he's gritting his teeth even now. Because he knows. <laughs> just for free. You know, we just <laughs> we married with Obey. Um, and uh, hey, we, had, uh, we were not pastors there, so we were fighting. We had a fight. Yeah, pastors don't fight with their wives and husbands. We just relate intensely. So... <laughs> Back then we had a fight, and uh, I visit this guy. <laughs> he was an evangelist in our small town, and I was interpreting for him in the lalis. There. So we visit him and his wife. They were staying in a caravan, <laughs> and there we had a very serious fight. And we walk in there. Um, how are you? Fine. Exchange pleasantries from nowhere. This guy <laughs> starts with me. Says, you know. God's hand is on your life. If you don't treat your wife with respect, if you don't, yo, he said everything that we disagreed on. I was sitting there like that puff out. I'm like, this is how poor mom. Nomsa, she came here and told them. The guy just went to town. I mean, the whole time we're sitting there, he was on my case. We walked out of there in the car. And just, <laughs> then I had a choice. The Holy Spirit said, there are two things confronting you here. You huff and puff like that and explode. It's your choice. Or you repent. Oh... I almost wanted to say, Holy Spirit, shut up, but I couldn't. That day, I had a choice. I can choose to be angry, continue being abusive, stubborn, stiff-necked, or I can choose to say, Lord, I'm sorry, and say to her or him, Khambagas indeed, I am sorry. Doesn't hurt. What are you going to choose? Where is that on my notes? Uh, it's nowhere. You see, the reason why we have to be conscious of this is what Paul says in Ephesians. Listen to the scripture. Uh, I hope I'm right. It's Ephesians 4.30 in the Passion Translation. He says, the Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your Full salvation. What has the Holy Spirit done? He has sealed. Who has ever sealed an envelope? Oh, you seal it so that nobody will open it who is not authorized to. So what does the Holy Spirit do? He seals us. 
until we are presented before God in the, at the completion of our salvation. So between then and now, nobody must open this. Does that make sense? I don't care whether you feel that time is running out, uh, these guys are not coming and you go and find a dinosaur somewhere out there in the world, you get married and you bring them to stages. I don't care. I've been a pastor for 36 years. I know these things. Pastor, it so happened, you know, I heard the voice of God. Which God? Which God? The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. It is so. Never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted His holy influence in your life. So when I don't become aware or conscious of who I am and whose I am, which is revival, by the way, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. I am. I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. Mm. Let's all say it. He revives and he refreshes us. Let's look at refresh in the next few minutes that I've got here. Refresh simply means to give new strength to someone. What does refresh mean? To give new strength to someone. We might have to talk about what is this strength for. Because people pray to God, we need your power. For what? We need your power. If God were to ask you, what are you going to do with my power? Ungatini. <laughs> Ungatini. Did you hear God there? <clears throat> mm. When... <laughs> When we refresh, it means we receive new energy and new power. We receive it new. In other words, it's like your petrol, your gauge in your car. You filled it up, you drove for a while. What happens to the gauge? It starts dropping. I can hear someone saying, oh, Jesus. Good January, Pastor. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so what do you do? You can't bind the gauge and say, when I stop in the name, you try. I know we, we all try that. I, I, I speak a miracle. Uh, may the gauge of my car touch the helm of your garment <laughs> and be made whole again. <laughs> but some things in life doesn't work that way. I don't care how hard you try in the name of Jesus. You can stand in front of that ATM and say, when I come right, why are you... What, what's wrong with your software? Zero, zero, zero. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so we need strength because as we live out this Christian life, we are executing it with power. There is strength that leaves our bodies. To, he says in the book of Revelations, you know, I got ahead of myself now. He who overcomes, I will give him to come. He who does what? Who overcomes. What is to overcome? It's to, it's to, with everything in you. That's why he even says some of you have not even resisted sin until the shedding of blood. In other words, sin can be resisted. Yebazalwan, sin can be resisted. Sin. Everything says steal this money. Sin says steal. Your bank account says steal. But what do you do? You resist it. 
You stand against it. You fight it. Hey, your cousins told you what to say. are the only one left now. Even the young one got married. Just stand there and say, Yawana, in the name of Jesus, not outside of God's timing, but in his time. Don't want to sit with a dinosaur. I don't know how to treat this thing. I want it in his time. You resist in the name of Jesus. They are bombarding you with those SMSs with blue hearts, red hearts, broken hearts, flying hearts, scattered hearts, turning hearts, pumping hearts. What do you do? In the name of Jesus. No, don't resist. Delete. He gives us strength. Even for this week, we're going to resist certain things. Hallelujah. I said, we're going to resist certain things. That Zoli and Sangu, that Dacha, it says, Hey, Dichai, 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 Dichai. Ustenapan, you are Pelan, Dichai, Dichai. Isaiah 40, I read it last week. Allow me to repeat this. Verse 29 to 31. He gives what? Let's you know, let's find that together. Let's <laughs> old day. Let's let's read it together. He gives what power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. That's God. The next verse. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. The young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and never faint. How many of you love to live in that domain where you know in your heart that Lord, I'm gonna hey, listen. Some of you need to make serious appointments with your pastors to go and repent. Revival is here. Some of you you need to seriously, and when you go there, don't lie, tell the whole truth. You know what I hate about the devil? He, he leads you on a path. He deceives you. He makes you feel nobody knows, nobody sees. And from nowhere, at the right time, he sets the detonator and the bomb explodes. At the right time. <laughs> I've told the men this. I don't want to say don't trust women. Oh, bad man, so especially those you are messing around with. Don't trust them. You know what? They come and tell. <laughs> you see, the devil is I'm a pastor. Here's my dilemma. I can't go to the usher and dig repentance out of him. He is in his red shirt this morning. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> now I'm standing here and I'm like, so it's just for free. Listen, the devil will embarrass you. He gives strength to the weak. He does. To do what? To fight him. Fight the devil. Say no, 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 no. What's going wrong in this Baptist church now? Why are you all dead quiet here? <laughs> so let me end off with this. What are the causes of us losing our consciousness, our awareness, and our strength. It's very simple. It's sin and wrong company. 
Everybody say that, sin and wrong company. Say it again, sin and wrong company. Okay, this scripture I used to live by this when I was young, younger than I am now, uh, back in the day as a new believer. It ministered to me. Um, it still does. Because to me it came as a caution, a warning. This is what Hosea chapter 7, verses 8 and 9 says, talking about God's people. In this case, he says, Ephraim. Let's read that verse together, please. What does it say? Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples. Ephraim is a cake unturned. Let me stop there. Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples. What does that mean? Ephraim has left his place of safety, which is the presence of God. He has all of a sudden become so comfortable in the company of sinners. <laughs> Ephraim, my people, in simple language, have become so comfortable in the company of unbelievers. They laugh louder among sinners than when they are with us. They look more livelier when they are with sinners than when they are with us. When I, as I said, this thing kept me going as a young believer. When I got to the mines, I've told the story. I got there. Uh, the first week, I was like thrown in, in a deep end, literally, where <laughs> the environment was foreign. I, the people looked strange. I didn't know what was happening. Now, coming out of a church where we were meeting for prayers or word services every evening of the week, now there I am. By Friday, I haven't been amongst believers. I haven't been in a prayer meeting. I haven't been in fellowship. I felt so awkward. This thing got so bad by Sunday because I didn't know who goes to church where. Where are other people other than these guys here? I felt two things. One, a stupid voice said to me, just keep your salvation to yourself until you leave this place. Just don't sin. Become an undercover agent of Jesus. And the other one said, listen, if you really miss this, you will get out of your comfort zone and go and find it. The following Sunday... I woke up in the morning, <laughs> I washed, dressed up, and I watched guys who were carrying Bibles. I followed them. <laughs> we went to this uh, train, for sake, we went to this train, every I don't know where we're all going, and I, I'm with my Bible, and I followed them. <laughs> Then I saw others pulling out their cigarettes with their Bibles and smoking that eye and the Ambinaba, and I'm watching. Others are calling girls. Yeah, when I told you, no, 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 da, 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 no, 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 no. So I'm, I'm watching. We all got off and I followed them. And by a long shot to the township, I followed them. And I said, okay, now I'm going to find believers. I walked through that township, small township, every church building. I got there, I stood outside, I listened. I saw God. When you go, what about that? Ah, nah, And I, churches came out. I couldn't find them. So I'm following these guys back to the rank where we dis didn't watch the bus in, where we had sat in the bus. <laughs> On our way there, I heard someone singing, Unamanza Ujeswam, in the taxi rank. And I came close and I listened. I heard a guy say, When I was a sinner, by his grace, I thought, hallelujah. Now, they thought I'm coming to give my life to Jesus. In fact, the guy who welcomed me there is now my best friend even till today. We became the closest of friends, best friend in Christ. I said to him, no, I'm one of you. And he said, no, I'm just in another hostel. We are number eight, number nine, when I'm number eight. Ah, I said, this is where I belong. 
You don't mix yourself with unbelievers. <laughs> I don't care how much you like them. You end up like an untanned cake. What does that mean? They were baking you or, or frying you or something. But you just cooked one side, this side. Hmm. This is your church side. <laughs> but in Gapa, let me read the verse again. Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples. Ephraim is a cake unturned. Listen to the following sentence. Aliens, let's read it together. Aliens have devoured his strength, but he does not know it. Udiyas, gray hairs are here and there on him, Omar Ejab, yet he does not know it. In other words, spiritually, you've lost, you, you, you've lost, you've lost your vitality. Your spiritual dynamic is gone. You don't know it. They've sucked and sapped everything from you that's godly. That's why in your WhatsApp messages, if it's a verse, you scroll fast. You are looking for stupid things. Hmm. How many of you got fed up when you see a verse in your WhatsApp group? Ah, if this. Ah. But if it's nonsense, <laughs> what about the verse? Hmm. Okay. So what causes us to lose our vitality? It's sin and wrong company. Say it again. It is sin and wrong company. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 15, and then we pray. <laughs> we'll do 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 30, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse, verses 33 and 34. Let's read it, nuns on the board. Do not be deceived. What does it say? Do not be deceived. What happens? Evil company corrupts good habits. Do not be received. Evil company corrupts good habits. One more time. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Then he says, awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. What is this I speak to you to your shame? I can almost hear Paul saying, you've been walking as a believer for so long, but you're not aware of this. Put it shame on, on you that you still are not aware of this. You used to do all those things with them, and you, you told them, no, now I'm in church, but nothing has changed. You're still there in their company, you still, and you are wondering why you are not what you think you feel you want to be. It's very simple. Walk away. Everybody say, walk away. So, revival is here. <laughs> revival is here. And this kind of revival, this is what excites me. Yes, we're going to go win the lost infant this afternoon. The young guys are going to town to shout that Jesus saves. Just try to join them this afternoon. Hmm. What time are we going? Are the guys going? Pastor H is leading a team. What time? Four. The young guys are going to town. We're going to shout there in town that Jesus saves. Can you come join them? I'm asking you. Let your light shine, not in church, out there. Let's say it again revive us, Lord. Refresh us, Lord. Let us pray, every head bowed, please, and every eye closed. I do believe in the altar calls, because God alters our lives here. I do believe in the altar calls, because this is where we defeat the devil. It's the first punch we deliver to him. 
when he says people will think this and that about me, you say, let them think I'm going there because I want God to help me. Altar calls are there for us to say, Lord, I am blaming nobody but myself. I'm taking full responsibility and I'm coming to you. I'm not running away from you. Just as I am with everything, everything, Lord, I'm hiding nothing from you. Just as I am, I come to you. There are two things I'm going to appeal to you with. With our heads bowed, please. I'll come to Lakla Zaiwa. Please just honor this moment. Please. You've never given your life to Jesus Christ. That's why your life is a struggle. My friend, only Jesus overcomes on our behalf. Only Jesus is the mediator between God and man. That's why you are still empty, having consulted all these other things. This morning you can say, Pastor John, please pray for me. I want to have this peace. Where I know that between me and God there is nothing. It is possible through Jesus. If you try it in your own strength, you'll never get there. This morning, the door is open. Doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, and what you are. What about your relationship with God? Let's make right today. It is no accident that you are here. He wanted you here. Let's make right. If that's you and you want us to pray together, show me by raising up your hand, please. Include me in that prayer. God bless you. Who else? Put it up, put it up, put it up. You say, today, Father God, this is my life. This is my life. This is who I am. I am surrendering this life to you. God is going to bless you as he meets you at your point of need. One more time, please. If you haven't raised up that hand yet, this is your opportune time where you say, Lord, I'm surrendering my life. Please stand as me now. A friend brought you here for a reason. They invited you because they know your life is not as you want us to believe. It's falling apart. You are walking under guilt, condemnation, bring them to Jesus. Only Jesus can heal you. The Christians are interceding for you because we understand the lies that the devil is, is even driving to you now. That you're gonna fail. I don't know why I'm saying my life is long. But but oh, God, we're so excited now. See, long and the man that I hear is why I wait to. See, long and the man that I'm going to hear is why I wait to. Allow us to pray with you. Number two, maybe you once believed in Jesus, lived for Him, but hey, my friend, be honest, man, you are now in a pig sty. You pillar ne aagum. I was some pillar in jengo nyana wali. Allow us to pray with you. Please. Don't, don't allow pride to rule your life. Allow us to pray with you. This is a turning point where God is restoring things. What a way to start 2024. What a way. What a way to start this new year. Knowing that I'm walking with him. I am his I am his own and he is mine. I belong to Jesus. Oh, glory to his name. It was in 1978 when I prayed this prayer, man. I will never regret praying this prayer. It changed my life. I belong to him, he belongs to me. I belong to him, he belongs to me. He belongs to me. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray in the spirit if you can, child of God. Just pray in the spirit. There is a battle raging here, and we are going to disarm him. We are going to disarm him. There is a battle raging here. We are standing against this re religious demon that's pretending to be serving God, and yet it's here for another agenda. We are standing against that. 
You're not going to lie to God's people. You devil will exposing you for what you are. See, I'm very Satan. You are a defeated enemy. Let God's people go. We're telling these taskmasters, let God's people go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shackles are falling. Bondages are broken and yokes are destroyed. As we come to Jesus, our liberator. This is somebody's son, this is somebody's daughter, that is somebody's wife, husband, child. Let us encourage them in prayer this morning. We are standing in the gap and we are interceding. We say, devil, here and no further. Take your filthy hands off. You are not going to lie again. You are not going to lie again. You are not going to control this life again. You have lost the battle. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Everything you've done has been nullified right here, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We depend upon you, Lord. We depend upon you. We depend upon you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, please, can we join these that are standing here in the front in this prayer? Our eyes are still closed. We pray. Everybody pray out loud, especially in the Pambil. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you this morning for saving my soul. I'm coming to you as a sinner who needs help. Forgive me, Father. Cleanse me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. I thank you for hearing my cry. From henceforth, I am yours. And you are mine. Holy Spirit, give me that power to live this life to the glory of God. Heal me of my sickness. Heal me of my disease. In my mind, in my soul, and in my spirit, I surrender to you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> Yo, Bazanabam. Wow. I can tell you now, I felt this. Only God can deliver you. Don't care what age you are in, what you've done or not done. Only God can do this. I celebrate with you. I'm happy for you. Have no fear. <laughs> How old are you? Tell me your No, this guy here. 25. Yo, at that age I got married. How, if, if you're not 18, how old are you? No, no, no. Tell the truth now. You're 21. <laughs> I was 18 when I said yes to Jesus. And today there is a 4 and a 6 somewhere in my age. I think it's 46. You know what? In that year, in, in, in that life, for 42 years of that life, I've walked with Jesus. He will never let you down. You don't have to be a spiritual giant. In and out, you're going to get there. But what he wants is just an honest heart. And in course, when you're scared, tell him. <laughs> you're causing your, your ego. Am I not going to fall here? Tell him. Tell him. He listens to you. Amen. Love you guys. I'm proud of you. I encourage you. Your lives will never be the same again. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now. There is this guy standing there, please. I want you to follow him. We want to give you something to read. Just turn this way and follow Ulwa Upudluaze that side. Come on, RUCC. Let's give God a big hand here. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that, man. This, this is the best day of their life. The best day of their life. Hallelujah. Come on. I said, Hallelujah. 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 Wow, what a savior we find in Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the best way you can start 2024 to come closer to Jesus. 
Now, hey, everybody stand up on your feet as we're about to leave this place. Listen to me. The choice is yours, man. Are you going to keep that evil company and continue in your sin? Or are you going to take a drastic step and cut that thing off? Cut it off. Tennis mistake is censored repeatedly. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I mean, look at me. Tell your neighbor, look at me. Say, why are you running away from me? Why are you running away from me? We here for each other. Amen. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. So be conscious. Itini, you are conscious. Itini, you are conscious. Okuma pa itini, you are conscious. I'm a frog as a one is in the Okuma pa pa kwaspa, you are conscious. What we can pay a frog as a itini daughter, as a one is in the itini, you are conscious. Who's the little one? Na, and you go warm, you go warm. Ah, amen. Love you guys. Let me declare this blessing upon you. You are highly favored of God. I want you to know that. Extremely so. Extremely so. Don't let him down. You are highly favored by God. You are so successful that your eyes have not seen anything yet. Nothing. You are not meant to walk in that case. You are blessed of God beyond measure. Abraham's blessings are yours. And go and experience that this week in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah.